training for this. The one that's a big thing here on ISS is an ammonia leak. We use ammonia as the avionics on board. And in that water to ammonia heat exchanger, should there be um, a rupture and we leak ammonia into the cabin, that's extremely um, poisonous. And we really have to run to our crew vehicles and close the hatch and basically get ready to come home because once it's out, there's really no way to contain it or, or no way to scrub it. We can scrub a little bit that we bring into our vehicles uh, with a, a special set of equipment that we have. But ammonia response is, is probably the most dire of all the emergencies that we practice. Yeah, I remember the ammonia training well. Matter of fact, I think um, it was when we were preparing for our first flight back in oh, mid 2000s, I think when this issue was first coming to light. And I remember we were training with you. So uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm very familiar with ammonia, you know, fire and DPDT. Hey, final question for me, and then we'll can turn I, it over to. Um, go ahead, Mike. Can I put in for the work that you guys, that uh, you and Tommaso did on the crew stand on the crew safety standard, which I think is published now. Correct me if I'm wrong, Cat. But you know, I, I read, poured over that thing not nearly as many times as you did, but quite a few times, and I was very impressed with how detailed and how de how much depth you got into, and what has to be, you know, by its nature, very very generic product so well done there yeah thank you uh, we had a lot of help with that of course and, and now it has me off working other standards which is uh <laughs> which has been a lot of fun and I, I do appreciate you uh bringing me into the fold mike it's been uh, great working with astm hey it final question for me is, uh, space debris. right we hear we hear about space debris frequently uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about what the effects of MMOD, you know, might have on the ISS and, and what action the ISS could take if there is, you know, a potential conjunction uh, in, in a few orbits or so? Yeah, so as you know, Chris, the uh, there's an entity that tracks that kind of thing. And if they perceive that there's, as you called it, a conjunction where the we might be uh, in jeopardy of being hit by a, a particle or a piece of debris the first thing we would do is try to maneuver out of its way it's pretty limited i mean all we can really do is do a reboost or a deboost so we accelerate or decelerate a little bit to change our altitude which hopefully takes us out of the orbital path of that thing um, if it's too late when we get to know that because the uncertainties of those things especially early on and their detection is really high and if it's late by the time they determine that um, there could be a real conjunction to maneuver then we take we take shelter basically we we take a plate in our safe haven and we cross our fingers and hope for the best you know the depressed response takes care of most things and as you know the the iss has a lot of shielding and the way they decided that the um, requirements of that shielding is they looked at how big these pieces are and then the probability based on the, on the piece. So obviously the bigger the piece, the lower the probability. And as you get smaller and smaller and smaller, once you get below a certain size, then there is a, a higher probability. And, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but we call the PNP probability of no penetration. And that had to be like a, a lot of nines. And above that PNP, you would shield for it. So whatever size that ended up being, we have, have armor that we could take a hit like that and not cause a, a puncture in the hull. Hey, thanks, Mike. Uh, we sort of appreciate your insight there. Um, hey, I, that's all for me. I, again, Mike, I just want to congratulate you again uh, on your trip back up there. It is always great to see you in space. Um, you know, at this point, uh, I think Andrew is, uh, is going to come on and he's got a couple of questions for you as well. Andrew, do you have a gavel in your hand? You're the chair. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You know, I've got some big shoes to fill since uh, since uh, you left the seat, the chair seat to myself. So um, we're trying to do as good I a think, job uh, as you did, Mike. Than you do. Sorry for talking over you. I said I think so, Fergie has bigger shoes to fill than you. Yeah, well, thank you. So, hey, so, you know, we've been talking a lot about safety and emergencies. 
Can walk us through what an emergency evacuation call actually looks like. So the, um, the two Dragon vehicles are docked to the very front end of the ISS, one on the forward port and one on the Zenith port. And then the Soyuz is docked on the very front of the Russian segment, which is quite a bit farther aft. They spend, the, the Russians uh, spend most of their time in the Russian segment, and of course the rest of us here in the U.S. operating segment. And in the case of something that required an immediate evacuation, you're, if it's an ammonia case, you're putting on a breathing mask, and you're basically hustling into um, your vehicle and closing, in our case, closing two hatches um, behind us. One is the, the note, the hatch that, that belongs to the space station proper. And then after that, there's another hatch at the very front end of the docking compartment. And then we have our hatch, which is uh, on the Dragon side. And then we basically wear it, we transfer our, um, our mass to a different breathing source. And then we measure how much ammonia we have in the cabin. And if it's above a certain amount, we have a big fan that we activate with a filter that'll scrub it out. So the, really the evacuation procedure is get to your vehicle as soon as you can. We actually have, you know, um, like on the on airlines where they talk about the exit pathway lights on the aisle, we have similar things are actually reflectors that point to the various vehicles. So if, it's, if it gets dark for, for whatever reason or smoky, then you can see these things pretty clearly and they lead you, it's like a yellow brick road back to your, your safe haven. So, Mike, we're running a little bit close on time, so I'm just going to wrap it up. Is there anything else of note that you'd like to share with us? No, I think no live dem live connection is complete without a cheesy zero-G demonstration, so I brought a different prop this time. This, this is a Mark I Mod Zero drinking water which I filled from our hydration station and put a drinking straw. You see the straw has a valve to keep it closed when I'm not using it. And when I want to use it, I open it up. And I usually do so with my mouth on the end, but in this case, I'm going to do it here. I'll try to keep it up in the field of view. Not working. I'm just going to drink it. All right, so that's proof I'm really in space. Awesome. I love it. Thank you Listen, so guys, much, Mike. It, it, it's mm -hmm. great chatting with you. Good to hear your voice, Fergie, Andrew, and Kat. I hope uh, you guys can get the train back on the tracks now that I'm not involved anymore and uh, keep pumping out some standards. Doing great work, and the industry really... Uh, appreciates what you're doing and um, making it better for all of us. So my hat's off to you. Thanks. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Michael, for taking the time out of your schedule to speak with us. I know we've all enjoyed seeing you up there in your element and learning more about the mission and safety standards on the International Space Station. We wish you the best on the rest of the Acts 3, and we'll see you back here on Earth. Ted, I know that was a... And I know that you read ahead, that Mike. because I've never heard you call it me twice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike. Uh, do All you the have best a... to you guys. What were you going to say? Nope. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say it's been a pleasure, guys, having having you guys on board here. And um, I wish you all best. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Can you give a special shout out to our friends here in Louisville, Kentucky that are at committee week? Yeah, I didn't know you were in Louisville, Kentucky. I thought you were in some name I can't pronounce in Pennsylvania, but <laughs> tip of the cap to all of you folks at ASTM in your uh, committee weeks. I, I don't know exactly all the standards you're working on, but I know that they're plentiful and they're useful and uh, industry consensus standards is a way to go. And thank you very much for all the work you're doing. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Get home safely. Thanks, Kat. See you all. Bye-bye.
That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Thank you.